One of our biggest fears as human beings is the fear of not knowing what's to come or the fear of the unknown. In property, there is a lot of unknown. There's a lot of hidden costs. There's a lot of things that most people starting out in the game have no idea about. In this quick educational, I'm gonna share with you the three key elements you need to be aware of. Affordability, upfront costs, and OPEX costs. I educate people to reach financial freedom through property through cash flow positive investments, specializing in the low income multi let residential market. So it's important that you know all the costs before you get into the property game. Number one, you have to understand what your affordability is. Affordability is a fancy word for how much you can afford to get from the bank. So what level of finance can you get from the bank? If you have X number of salary, how much bond facility can you get? The higher your salary, the higher your earnings, the higher your income and your personal name, the higher the loan facility that the bank is willing to offer you. The second really important cost is your acquisition costs or your upfront costs. These are the costs that are once up, uh, once off, paid upfront in order to purchase the property. And then you've got your OPEX costs, which relate to all your monthly recurring costs of managing the property. Let's start with affordability. Affordability relates to the amount of finance you are eligible from the bank. I like to use Property24's um, calculator. You just go onto their main site and under calculators, you'll see that they've got an affordability calculator. On the left-hand side, you can put in your monthly gross income, your net income, which is after tax. You've got your monthly expenses, and then you can choose an interest rate and a loan term. I would recommend that you choose a higher interest rate. Uh, prime, I've used uh, 9%, which was prime at the time of recording this video. Uh, whatever prime is at the time you're watching this video, use that as your interest rate. And then on the right here, you can see that the amount that you qualify for based on those inputs is 778,000 Rand. And that would roughly equate to, if you took that full loan, to 7,000 Rand per month. So go on to Property24, put in your details and see what your loan amount is because that's going to determine what kind of property you can go for, what area you can focus on. The second element is acquisition costs, which relate to all the once off, usually upfront costs of purchasing a property. Now there are six main ones that I focus on. Number one is your deposit, right? If you go to the bank and you get a loan from the bank, the bank will loan you X percentage of the purchase price. So for example, if the purchase price is a million rand and the bank is offering you 90% loan to value, that means they will pay 900,000 of that million of the property for you, right? You obviously pay them their bond repayment back. The remaining 10% that's your deposit is often referred to as a down payment. Transfer costs. Now, when you buy a property, you're going to have to transfer it from the seller's name into your name, and there are some legal fees associated to that. You'll also have to pay for the bond registration costs. This is what the bank charges as a fee, an administrative fee, to provision the bond for you. So those are two, I often refer to those two as your buying costs, your transfer legal fees and your bond registration fees. Renovations. If you're buying a distressed property and you're aiming to flip it, or even if you're buying a property that needs a little bit of TLC before it's tenantable, well, then you've got renovation costs that you have to usually on an upfront basis pay in order to get the property into the right condition. Zoning. Now, this is more of an advanced um, cost. It only depends if you're looking to change the zoning. So you might want to change a residential zone into a commercial zone because you want to start attracting business tenants. Or in my case, what I tend to do is I take the zoning of a block of flats and I zone it from um, one title deed and I sectionalize it into a sectional title so I can get multiple title deeds to raise finance. So that would be something that you know, you'd have to budget in your numbers upfront. And then holding costs, I've put stars there because this is only applicable um, to the flipping strategy. So if you're looking to you know, buy and sell in a short space of time, often referred to as a flip, uh, you know, you're gonna have to provision let's call it six months of holding costs while you hold the property before you sell it you obviously have to pay your bond your levies your rates and taxes so that would be potentially a fee that you would or a cost that you would account for in your numbers so let's use an example i've just taken a random property off of uh, property 24 in pochostrom central which is uh, is that northwest or is that bloemfontein Jeez, guys, uh, or Free State. I did, I did bad in geography. <laughs> anyway, put in the comments below uh, if uh, Poch is in Northwest or Free State. I'm pretty sure it's in the Northwest, but 
just to save me some embarrassment. So this five bedroom house, um, the asking price is 1.2 million. Some more detail from the agent is that it's an excellent investment opportunity uh, that offers five spacious bedrooms. Um, and the main thing is that you know, you, you've know you got the potential to do some student accommodation here. So I wanna use this as a student accommodation strategy and show you some of the hidden costs towards buying this property. On the inside, it looks pretty nice. Um, I love these bathrooms on the left. You can see an avocado color. Avocado tells you that this property is at least 30, 40 years old and hasn't been touched in terms of maintenance because that's a very old style. You know, if you walk into a modern bathroom these days, it's it's uh, it's usually white, it's open plan, it's very clear. Uh, when you start getting colorful bathrooms, you know, colorful toilets or, or avocado bathtubs, you know you're working with a, a relatively old property, which is not bad. You know, that's, that just means that there's some potential for TLC, there's some potential to add value. So assuming you're buying this property at 1.2 million, uh, at a 9% interest over 20 years, your monthly bond repayment will be 10,796. And at the bottom right here, you can see that in order to achieve or qualify for this size of a loan, you need a gross monthly income of roughly 36,000 Rand. So what are your acquisition costs? What would be the upfront costs to acquire this property? First of all, deposit would be zero because you are getting a 100% loan. That's what the numbers are here. I, I used 100% loan to value. You don't always get 100%. It depends on the deal, it depends on your affordability and your credit score. But I'm just assuming that the bank will give you 100%, which means your deposit is zero. If, you're, uh, if the bank only gave you 90% loan to value, then your deposit would be 120,000, 10% of the purchase price. Transfer costs and bond registration costs, I use an app called uber.co.za. It tells you that it's roughly 35,000 for transfer and 35,000 for bond. Renovations, I've just estimated, you know, roughly 80,000 Rand to touch it up and then 70,000 Rand to procure furniture. If you're going the student accommodation route, you need to provide tables and desks and built-in cupboards and all of that stuff. So I've allocated a portion to freshening the property up, making it look lacquer and then some furniture so that I can attract some, some lacquer students. Zoning, I wanna make sure that this is zoned for communal use. I wanna have multiple people on the property and I wanna get accredited with NISFAS. NISFAS is a government institution that funds students' accommodation, their books, and, and all of that stuff. So it's, a, it's essentially a fund to help students pay for university. And then holding costs. I'm assuming that I'm probably going to hold this property for three months, do the renovations, get the zoning in place, and then I'll start putting students in. So for three months, I'm going to have to pay the bond, rates and taxes, all of that stuff. So I'm estimating 30,000 Rand as a holding cost upfront. So my acquisition costs to buy this property is 330,000 Rand. That's cash that I need, or I need to partner with a private financier or a private individual or whatever it may be. So I've got the bank giving me 1.2 million for the purchase of the asset, but then I need another 330,000 of my own capital to proceed with this deal. This is the unknown numbers that sometimes people, they jump in, they think I've got 100% finance from the bank, I've got no money in the deal. Well, that's not really the case. There are a couple of other costs that you need to keep into account. So that's your acquisition side. What about OPEX? What are your monthly recurring and operating costs in terms of managing this property? So the first one, the one that probably everybody knows is your bond. It's sometimes referred to as your mortgage payment. So this is when you get a loan from the bank, the bank asks you or expects you to pay a monthly fee and slowly pay off the loan over a 20 year period. You've got rates and taxes and levies. Rates and taxes is what the municipality charges for, and uh, your levies is what the body corporate of the estate charges for. Um, then you've got insurance, right? You've got building insurance, you've got content insurance, you've got different types of insurance. It depends what you want to insure. I usually insure the outside of the building and then the inside of the unit, that is what the tenant has to do. They have to do content insurance. I'm not gonna insure your contents. I'm gonna insure that the building, if it was to burn down, you know, insurers would pay back. Utilities, water, electricity, the things that your tenant consumes is an operating cost. Sometimes you can pass that cost onto your tenant, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can have prepaid meters, sometimes you have to factor it into your rent, right? But you need to know what these numbers are and who's paying for them so that you can work out accurately what your return on investment is. Management, 
I, I fully believe in having a, as passive an income stream as possible and with property that is possible, if you've got a good managing agent who's vetting the tenants, marketing, marketing the unit, doing the inspections, so that all you have to do is an hour to two per month where you're just managing your letting agent and they're managing your asset for you. So that's a monthly cost that you have to have for your, for your OPEX. And then provisions. Vacancies and maintenance, two very, very important provisions that you have to account for. So if I'm looking at this deal from a cash flow perspective now, I want to see how is the monthly OPEX running and what's my rental so that I can see is this a profitable deal or not. So the first one is my bond, right? 10.7 we saw on the property 24 calculator that that would be roughly my monthly bond repayment. Rates and taxes and levies is 500. Now levies are not applicable on a freestanding house. They're only applicable in an estate or in a sectional title. So therefore it's actually only rates and taxes that are payable here. I've guessed a, an insurance figure of 750. Um, you know, don't, don't quote me on that. That's just an assumption of, of what I've seen. Um, utilities, because I feel that I can get about 11 students into this property, two per, per bedroom and the five bedrooms and then the one flat at the back, um, at 280 Rand per month for water and electricity, that's what I've put my utilities at 3.08 thousand Rand. Management, I'm giving 10% of the rent collected to the managing agent as a cost. And then provisions, I'm putting 20% of the rent that I get every month aside. That's for vacancies, that's for maintenance. Remember, students don't see this as a home, they see this as their personal party zone, they're gonna smoke heavily, they're gonna drink, they're gonna mess, they're gonna they're gonna use your your facilities a lot and you're gonna to have to maintain. There's gonna be a lot more wear and tear when you've got 11 people living in a house where normally four people would live or a small family would live. So you've gotta put a little bit more provisions aside. So adding all of these costs up to operate this uh, asset on a month to month basis is going to cost me just under 26,000 Rand per month. So are the numbers going to stack? Let's see. My monthly OPEX to run this business is 20, let's call it 26,000. The rental income on the 10 students that are sharing a room, this first pays 3,200 per room or per, per student. And then the flat, because it's a independent unit, I think I can get a little bit more. I've put 4.5. So my total rent of 36,000 minus my OPEX cost of 26,000 means I'll be left with a cash flow, a profit of a monthly basis being 10,520. Guys, you need to know your costs. What's your affordability? What can you afford based on your salary? What are the acquisition upfront costs, your buying costs, your, your, your renovations, your zoning? And then on an, on, a, on, a operating, on a monthly operating basis, how much is this business going to cost you and how much are you getting in rent? Make sure that it is cash flow positive so that you have bought yourself not a liability, but an asset. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, please go and check out my books. They're available here or at any exclusive books nationwide.